Hey everyone, I'm Rick Beato, and today's Everything Music, we're going to talk about music theory for producers. These are the basics that you need to know if you're going to call yourself a producer. Now, I've been producing records for the last 25 years. I had an experience with a producer that produced one of my old bands. I talked about it in one of my videos where I described my band getting signed and we worked with this producer that was a horrendously bad producer that never showed up. But when he did show up, he had terrible ideas. For example, he didn't know what a harmony part was. He didn't know how to harmonize a note. This is a basic principle that you need to understand if you're going to call yourself a producer. You need to know how to harmonize a vocal melody. In order to know how to harmonize a vocal melody, there's a couple things you need to know. First of all, you need to know what chords there are in the song. And you need to know what note is in the melody. If we take an F major chord, let's say we're doing a tune, it's some EDM track and it's got the progression that you're on an F major chord, okay? And you know it's F major because you can figure it out. If you can't figure it out, you're really in trouble. You should know your basics, what the major and minor chords are in every particular key. Simple Roman numeral analysis. The most common chords to know are the one, four, five, and six, because that's pretty much everything that's on the radio uses those chords. There's almost no modulating to other keys or anything. If you just know that, you're, you can pretty much produce most of the things that are out there. In order to harmonize a note, you need to know what note it is that you're gonna harmonize, and what are the other notes remaining in the chord. In a triad, there's only three notes, so you have the melody note, and then you have the two remaining notes, and those are your harmony notes. For example, if I have an F major chord, okay, like this, and the singer is singing this note A, well, A is, happens to be the third of the chord, so you have to know what notes there are in an F major chord. Either memorize what they are, or you need to memorize the shapes on the piano or the guitar. So you need to play a chording instrument, at least have basic, you need, you, need to have, you need to have at least a basic understanding of a chording instrument. Now an F major chord is these, now an F major chord is comprised of these notes, F, A, C. So if I'm playing F major and the melody is A, the remaining two notes are my possible harmony notes. There's C and there's F are gonna be my harmony choices. If the melody note is C, my other two choices are A and F. They're the two remaining notes of the chord that are not being used. That's how harmonies work. Now harmonies can be above or below the note, or they can be above and below the note. It depends on what you're doing. If you have a pop track, sometimes you'll have a huge stack of harmonies. If you're doing R&B, you can have a hundred vocals. You can have tons and tons of background vocals. But essentially, unless you're doing a Jacob Collier track that has a, a lot of chromaticism, I'm talking about actually producing rock, pop, hip hop, things like that, you're gonna know, need to just know basic major and minor chords. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna get a chart and memorize it. Even if you just have a chart that you refer to, that you bring until you have it memorized, you need to know what notes there are in the key, okay? If we take the key of F major, F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, and then back to F, okay? So the four chords in this that you're gonna to need to know is the one chord is F major, the four chord is B flat major, the, the five chord is C major, and the sixth chord is D minor. You might have a progression that's four, one, six, five. You may have a progression that's one, four, six, five. Or you may have a progression that is four, one, five, six. Could be any of those. If you're on the four chord B flat, you're gonna need to know if the singer is singing B flat and you want a higher harmony, well, the next closest note in the chord, which is D, is gonna be your best choice. You could sing the F, but that's gonna to be too big of a spread above the melody note, okay? You wanna go with the closest chord tones to the melody, either above or below, and this is a personal taste thing. Sometimes you want harmonies if the melody is in a high range in the singer's voice, you want that to be the highest note in the chord, and you want the other notes to be supporting from below. 
If you have a low singer, then you want to have the harmonies be above it. The main thing is that the harmony parts need to be in as close a relationship with the melody note as possible. If I have a B flat major chord here, and I'm singing B flat in the melody, I'm gonna want a D to be above that, or I'm gonna want it, I'm gonna want the F to be below it. Or you could have you could have both F below it and D above it, or you could have both F and D above it. Or you could have F and D below it. If you be, be fits there, the other second singer can sing the note F and the third singer can sing the note D. Now, when you get into stacking of vocals, what you don't want to do is you don't want to put too much emphasis on the third of the chord. If I've got this B flat major chord, the third of the chord is D. Now D, if there's too many Ds in the chord, if there are too many thirds of a major chord, it weakens the sound of the chord. So always lean on the roots and fifths and have a couple thirds in there, but don't load the chord down with too many thirds. You want to balance the chords out. I'm talking in stacking things when you start getting in and doubling and doubling and doubling. Don't put too many thirds in the chords on major chords or minor chords. You have to know where these chords are on the piano or guitar. Piano is the best because it's very visual. So let's take a look at some of these chords. I'm going to put a chart with a link in the comments I'm going to put a chart in the description below that you can link to and download. That chart is going to have all your major and minor triad formulas, meaning what notes are in each major and minor chord. You're not going to have diminished or augmented chords. You don't have to worry about that. Occasionally, you're going to have seventh chords as well. You might have major seventh chords. You might want to add the major seventh on a chord also. If you have an F major chord and you have the note C is your melody, you might put an E above that and make it a major 7. Or you might put an E flat above that and make it a dominant 7th. That's going to be a really special instance when you use those notes. The 5th is the one note that you may put a 3rd above. Occasionally you will have 7th chords that you can extend to ninth chords, but you're starting to get where you're out of your idiom and into other areas. Okay, here's an F major chord. Let's say this is your one chord. So you have the notes F, that's the root, then the A is the third, and C is the fifth. If the melody note is A, you see that's right in the middle of the chord here, that's the third of the chord. It really, it's called the third because it's the third note of the scale. So you have the, the root, which is the first note of the scale, second, third, fourth, fifth. So this is the fifth. It's called the fifth because it's the fifth note of the scale. So if the melody is this note and you figured it out that you're on an F major chord and the singer is singing A, your other two available notes for harmony are the C and the F. Now they could actually be here, there, and there, or they could be here and here. Okay. If the note is A, the harmony notes are C or F. So whatever the remaining notes in the chord are, are going to be your harmony notes. They could also be down here. You could go A there with, with F below it and C below it. If you want this note to stand out, it depends on where it is in the singer's range. If the note is C, which is the fifth of the chord, our two available notes that are not in the chord are A and F. So those are your harmony notes. And they can either be below the note they can be one below, one above. There's a melody, you got one note, the A below, and the F, which is this one, I moved up the octave, above. And it can be that. Or you could have two notes above it. But that melody is not gonna stick out. Usually it's best if it's the top note of the chord and you only have one note above it. Now occasionally, you can have the seventh be in there. If it's the one chord, if you have an F major chord, you can sing the E above it. But Typically, the F is going to sound better, depending on the context. If you have a B flat major chord, that's your four chord in the song. I've got B flat, which is the root, D is the third, F is the fifth. If I have the note F in the melody, the other two remaining notes that I can use as harmonies are the other two notes that are left in the chord. If I have the note D, then I've got B flat and F as harmony notes. And if I have B flat as a melody note, I have D and F as harmony notes. And they can be 
below it as well. D and F with B flat being the being the melody note. Melody note, two harmony notes below, one harmony note below and above. Melody note, I have a F below and a D above, or two harmony notes above, D and F. Melody, harmony, harmony. Okay? If I have D, D minor chord, I have D, F, A. If D is in the melody, I have F as my upper harmony, and A can be a lower harmony, or F and A can be upper harmonies, with this being the melody, or I can do F and A below it. But if D is the melody note that the singer is singing in the lead vocal, my other two notes are going to be F and A that I can use as harmony notes. If the melody is the note F, then I've got D and A as harmony notes. And if the note is A, the fifth, I've got the notes F and D that I can use. Okay, I'm going to make this really simple. Let's say we have a C major chord. Okay? And you figured out that that's the chord that you're that you're singing. Well, there are three notes in the chord, C, E, and G. And this is stuff that you need to memorize. You have the root, the third, and the fifth. Why are they called that? The, it's called the third, this note, because it's, it's the third note of the scale, and this is the fifth note of the scale. One, two, three, four, five. Okay? That's why those have those names. If the melody note is this, the two remaining notes are your harmony possibilities, your E and G. Now you may only have one harmony part, so it may only be the E, but you're typically not gonna use the, just the G because you wanna get the closest note in the chord to the melody note, either above it or below it. Below, G would be the closest note in the chord and E would be further away. If the melody note is E, you have the two remaining notes of the chord, E and G are your two harmony notes. And if the melody note is G, your other two remaining notes, E and C, are your harmony notes. And they can be below it, you can have one below it and above it, or you can have two above it. There's your melody note, there's your harmony notes. Melody note, harmony note, melody note, harmony notes. That goes for any chord. Let's say you have an A minor chord. You have A, C, and E. A is the root, C is the third, E is the fifth. If the melody note is the note C, your harmony notes are gonna be E and A, the remaining notes of the chord. If the melody is A, your harmony notes are gonna be these two. If the melody note is E, here's your harmony notes. Whatever notes are left over, and you always wanna pick the closest notes to the melody note, either above it or below it. If you're gonna have one harmony part, it's gonna be that note below it or this note above it. There's your A above it. I've taken it from the octave up here. And then if I have the C is my melody note, I've got this note below it, A, and that note above it. Those are my two extra notes I have. So C is gonna have the notes A or E as their harmony notes. The note A is going to have C or E as the harmony notes. So whatever notes are left over are the harmony notes. Now once you learn all your basic major minor chords, there's a couple extra notes that sound good, not just as harmony notes, but as on other instruments, as overdub parts. Let's say I've got a C chord, but I don't have, let's say I just have a C and G voice, and we call that like a C5 chord. Okay, so it's just the notes C and G. It used in place of C major. Now I can play. I'm playing a C sus2 chord against that. C, D, G, or C, D, B. If I have an F5 chord here, or F major chord, but I put the third in there, I can use the seventh, ninth, or eleventh, or thirteenth. Those are called the upper extensions. They're not part of the triad. The seventh sounds like this. That's the seventh. Here's the ninth. Here's the eleven, which wants to resolve back, or the sharp eleven, which wants to resolve up. But it 
you can come up with some really cool parts by having those upper extensions. There's the uh, seventh to the fifth. So knowing those notes over the chords, just the triads first, and then expanding upon that with some of the upper extensions, that's going to be where you're getting into a little bit more advanced theory and knowing what those other notes of the scale are that are not part of the triad. Those are called your upper extensions. So here's your chord tones for F major. You got the root, the third, the fifth. And the remaining scale notes are your upper extensions. This is the second or the ninth. If you ever hear the add nine chord, that means you take a major chord and you add the ninth. If you take the third of the chord, you move it up a half step, it comes a suspended four or a sus four. Or you could have it with a sharp four there too, okay? So here's your ninth, your sharp 11, your 11, or your second, fourth sharp four six and the reason you call them that is because it's that's the second of the scale fourth note of the scale or second third sharp four five and then six but the two four and six are called nine eleven thirteen or nine sharp eleven thirteen so anything that is not in the chord is a non-chord tone or an upper extension so that E would be your major seventh. That G is gonna be your ninth. The B flat is dissonant. It doesn't sound quite as good as the sharp 11 there, the B, okay? And then the, the D is the 13th. That one is really tricky. You wanna pretty much avoid that because that 13th does not sound good in pop music. Okay, that's really for more modern sounds. So those are your upper extensions. There are notes that are not part of the triad. The same goes for minor chords. If I have an A minor chord, so you get your seventh, ninth, and eleventh, and your flat six. So anything that's not part of the triad, whether it's a major or minor chord, are upper extensions. That's all for now. Please subscribe here to my Everything Music YouTube channel. And if you're interested in the Beato book where you can get all this theory, you can write me at rickbeato1 at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.